So I'm going to walk you through a string change on my new Gauguin XTSA. I've changed strings only once before since I got this one in the fall of 2020. I own over 20 stringed instruments, so I've changed a lot of strings, but this one had unique locking tuners of the, of the kind I'd never seen before, so I had to learn about that. And I went looking on YouTube and there was no video about uh, maintenance on this guitar that I could find. So I thought, hey, I'll just make one. So um, this guitar has been a little bit problematic. I love how it plays, I love the pickups, I love the acoustic simulator that's built in, but it seems to have a lot of trouble staying in tune. So last string change, I did a little bit of research and I actually used uh, like graphite from a artist pencil in the nut and then some um, like lip balm on the saddles. And that seemed to help a little bit because some people you know, mentioned those as cheap solutions for lubrication. This is the only guitar I have right now that has a floating pivot bridge. The other one that I have, I had locked down because I do a lot of drop tuning on it, seven string I've been So this one, I still have the uh, active pivot tremolo arm bridge situation. I haven't locked down yet and don't really want to because I like how it behaves, except for when it comes to tuning. So I did a little bit more research. We've got some products and we're gonna try to get through this string change with a little bit more success on tuning. So when I change strings, I always have string winder. Gotta have that. I always have wire cutters. Um, I really like these DR neon strings. I've been using them on a lot of my guitars. I don't think they last quite as long as elixirs, but they're fun. Um, they glow in the dark, actually, if you have like a black light. They tell you when they need to be changed because as you can see with this guitar here right now, they, all, the, all the paint's rubbing off of the strings. And they have kind of a cool raspy tone when they're new. I do like coated strings. I think if you want pure longevity, you go with elixirs, but if you want like some longevity and a lot of fun, these VR strings are great. I usually have um, my duster can for blowing out fragments of picks. And I try to have a cloth around just for you know minimal cleaning. I'm not doing a hardcore cleaning on the guitar this time. But the two extra things I got is I got a recommendation from several places. I got a tube of Big Ben's nut sauce, which can also be used on the bridge. But interestingly, they say don't use it before changing strings. So I'm gonna try to use it after. And then I've also got TriFlow. I think this is Teflon from the research I did. Um, it's funny if you open up that can of worms about like what you should lubricate bridge saddles and pivot bridges with, you can find a million uh, opinions online from use WD-40 to don't use WD-40. But I think, you know, I've got my stack of paper towels here because I figure anything I put on a thousand dollar guitar, I'm going to have to be really careful with. And um, it seemed like Teflon was recommended more than like other things. A lot of places said don't use silicon. So I usually find the six string first. And, most guitars. I'll have to lay aside the third string because it comes in the same pack. So I went, decided to go with orange this time, so I'm going to lay the third string on the floor over here. So I've got my lovely looking clothes and dark string here. So I will show you an up close on these um, caps in a second here. I'm just taking the string all the way down to where it's loose. And then I usually cut them because uh, I've been told by some luthiers that pulling jagged, twisted ends through bridge saddles is not a great idea. So it'll come out cleaner if I cut it halfway down the length. So I usually do that. Pull that one out. And then this is, you know, every time you pull out a string, you do a little bit of dusting. So I'm doing that, trying to keep my guitar looking at least not totally gross because I make a lot of covers. This guitar is pretty new, so I'm gonna, not going to worry about conditioning the fretboard or anything yet. But yeah, these little caps are interesting. So you unscrew this cap. You can actually take it all the way off, but there's no reason to. So loosening it up is probably fine. And the idea with these is you really don't have, because they're locking, you don't have to wind a whole lot, like once around is what the Gauguin rep said. Um, so unlike most string changes where I try to leave slack that I wind up for this one, I'm just going to feed it through, leave barely a little bit of slack, tighten this down, and then tune it up. So we'll see what happens. So we're not doing lubrication here yet. I'm just going to take a look at what this seems like if I spray this on here. Oh, that's the wrong one. 
Hey, shake that because it has a little ball in there for a reason, right? This stuff's pretty runny, I remember. Yeah, looks like it, so. It's kind of rubbed in there. If I was going to use the Big Ben's nut sauce, I say don't do this before restringing. But this one, the tri flow, I can, so. Go through the back. You can have a fun style on this guitar. So then I'm going to string it all the way up to the top here. Go through the hole. I leave these things either curly or you, you'll see. I think this time I'm not going to curl them, but you have to have this cap up enough that the string goes through and that is further up on the heavier strings. So that's barely a lot of slack, but I'm just going to go with that, tighten it down. And we'll see what we get. Whoops, a lot of flop is what we get, right? I was thinking this would go for about a wind. Um, that was probably a little more than I needed, but looks really cool on this guitar, I think. The, the orange does. Okay, so that's the first one, and I'm not going to cut it off right yet. But because it's a floating bridge, I'm going to kind of tune it up close to pitch. Whoops, wrong direction. Just to keep the bridge in the alignment I want it in. And then the other string I had on the floor, according to the package, was the third. So unfortunately, we got to take this one off next. I think this one I'll show you real up close how I do the head. So I'm going to unlock this slightly. Now the string is loose. I can cut it halfway down the length. And it's pretty easy to get these out of this because of the way they're designed. Poke it out the back. And then we're going to do the clean process. All right, so we grab our third string off the floor. Go through the back. So I'm going to try again to put like the very smallest amount of this tri on here that I can. Oops, that soaks a small amount, but it's zero. It seems really good for cleaning off the bridge, that's for dang sure. I hope I'm not absorbing too much of it with this clock, but I'd rather go with a product like that on your guitar, I'd rather go conservative, you know. Okay, so up and then through this saddle again. So, yeah, these other, I would trim these other ones off that I, I was being artistic with because they're just getting in the way at this point. There we go. So we're going to just find where the hole is. You can always move the hole around to where it's convenient to go through it. Now I'll admit it, I have kind of crappy eyesight as far as finding this. But there we go, we're going through. And then, you know, I don't have to pull it super tight, just kind of slightly. And I'm just screwing this to lock it down. I don't know if there's a logic to screwing it down super tight before or after you tune the string up. I don't know. But um, I just went back and tightened the other one a little bit more. So now I'm just kind of going around with the string wonder. A little bit of poppage at the other end of the guitar. Never fun, but so that's just good in the ballpark. So now I'm going to tighten this guy all the way. It's once you get used to this, it's pretty easy compared to guitars where you have to really worry about all the winding process. Okay, so I open up the next pack. So at this point, we're just kind of going through the motions with all the other strings. You can also mix and match these packs with the young guitars to make really weird color combinations if you so desire. So we're almost halfway done here. part right keep trying to show this uh, process of the nut here to make sure I get a good view on it so go through the hole we got kind of wound around this other string here but we'll go back and 
reset it. There we go. So screw the cap again. Super easy. And then another string to tighten up. I like guitars where all the head, all the tuners are on one side because then you never have to deal with reaching over in an awkward way. But okay, so hey, we got two more, and I'm using like this towel to kind of direct where the spray goes, you know. Yeah, but I think it's probably better to leave more on than I did the first time. I was a little perplexed with this guitar when it came. I feel like a lot of guitars should come with instructions or something more than they do. However, I will say that Godan is super helpful if you ever contact them. You usually get the same one or two people and they make amazing guitars and they also really are helpful. So there you go. So tighten that one up. Two pitch here. Okay, and then the last string, here we go. Doesn't want to go through the saddle, you know. This thing's sitting in a package being lazy, you know, it's like, no, now you're gonna be begging me. Ah, I don't want to, I don't want to submit to this. Wow, this one really does not want to go through. Sometimes I'll put a little crook on the end of strings to help direct them through saddles. See if that worked. Weird, but it worked. So up to this end again. You tighten this one up. So obviously this is not where things end, because it's not gonna be intended at all. But you can see what it looks like now. So they got like really cool looking orange strings. It's amazing how different it looks on the different cameras. Um, beautiful, ready rock, right? So I'm gonna tighten all of these guys down just a little bit more. Cause they are the mechanism that's holding the strings on, right? All right, so. What it says on this package of Big Ben's Nut Sauce is relieve tension from the string so it can be lifted out of the nut slot. So this thing has these little micro tips. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the smaller ones because why the heck not, right? And like I said, they say you can use this on the bridge saddles too, but I just opted to do the tri flow today. So I'm going to try detuning one of these guys. lift this out of the slot. There we go. And then you just kind of pull this back slightly, pull the plunger back slightly. Never done this before, so we're experimenting. Like, see something coming out. Okay, so it kind of viscous there. We're just gonna kind of move it around with this little thing. I am not the most mechanical person, so this is always kind of an experiment when I learn new things. And you can see that some of the graphite still there from my last string change. We just kind of put that guy back down in there. Because it's pivot bridge, we're going to tune it back up. Okay, next one. So we're going to detune again. Lift this guy out of the way. And we'll just keep kind of pulling back from the plunger here. Add a little bit more. So you just kind of do this to every string. It's kind of cool that it's a transparent plunger because it helps you see, you know, kind of like what you're, when you're about to squirt it out. Okay, so put that one back in the slot. Assume that the string itself kind of squishes it down in there too, you know. Okay, so now we're gonna try tuning this guy up. Let me go grab a tuner. Oh wait, we were supposed to one other thing. I was going to try to get some lubricant on these posts down here. 
tweak that a little bit more. So. Now I've got my Rogi tuner here, which is kind of cool. So you run this through its first uh, tuning here. So this product's pretty cool because it actually just tunes it up for you. I think I've confused it with this one. Hold on. Let's see if we can grab it now. That was too far off too. Because it's a, a floating bridge, it's going to take a lot more tunings, obviously. These uh, eggs that are so scary here, what I usually do is I try to orient them all, poke out a certain way, um, and then cut them off at a certain length, just kind of for fun. So this is what it ends up looking like. Or I call this the rule of seven scoops. If you have a floating bridge, you may have to do it seven times in a row to equalize the bridge. And this is number three already, so. Still not quite there yet, right? So now I'm gonna do some string stretching. Then we're gonna find out how things are going. Yeah. You also can use Lemmy bars, do some stretching. But you can do this to stretch strings, or you can play a lot of bends, or you can use whammy bar, or all three. Really stretching out these higher ones. So let's run through two. I don't even remember which number this was, five or six. So now it's starting to sound like a guitar. I'm just trying to get everything in this, you know, kind of baseline stretched out before I make conclusions about the lubrication we did. It does seem better, I would say. So I think that's the conclusion of today's test. It seems like it's being more resilient about tuning than it was. Um, I'll, I'll make a goal to comment on this video further about that when I post it. And even after I posted it, thanks for being part of this gear journey today. And uh, if you like this kind of thing, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.